The Federal Reserve is suggesting it plans to raise interest rates as soon as March in an effort to fight inflation. NBC News correspondent Tom Costello explains. Expectations. Mona, we're going to uh, interrupt right now and go to Steve Leisman with the Fed decision. The committee expects it will, quote, soon be appropriate to raise the target range. It's a central bank strategy to fight skyrocketing prices from grocery aisles to gas stations. The Federal Reserve suggesting it will soon start slowly raising interest rates. I think there's quite a bit of room to raise interest rates without threatening the labor market. Analysts believe the Fed will raise rates gradually in quarter point steps beginning in March. Higher interest rates will likely lead to more expensive car and student loans, credit cards and new home mortgages, even as home prices nationally are up 14 percent in a year. Here in Phoenix, where new home prices have jumped 30 percent, Jacob Dennett and his wife Nicole are struggling to find a new home and fear it could soon be out of reach. It's turned into more of a business transaction rather than our first time home buying experience together that should be fun and enjoyable. The coming rate hikes follow an unprecedented two years. The stock market plunging the worst single day drop in history. In March of 2020, the new pandemic and fear of a deep economic rout pushed the market into a steep dive. The Fed quickly dropped interest rates to near zero, helping to support the economy and limit the recession. But two years later, consumers are paying more for everything from food and clothing to cars and gasoline. As we're seeing inflation rise, that is a signal to the Federal Reserve that something needs to be done. Tom Costello reporting there. Joining us now, former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. Steve, good morning. I want to get to your charts uh, in just a minute. But what did you make of the Fed's announcement or at least its signal that come March it will play with those rates a bit to do something about this inflation that's pushing up against 7 percent now? Yes, it's something that we expected, the market expected. The Fed has been signaling that for a while now. And the only question is whether, in effect, they may have waited too long. As you know, inflation has gone up a lot. The economy is roaring. You just saw what's going on with house prices, which is a principal target of interest rate policy to keep house prices from going up as fast as they've been going up. But we're trying to land a plane that is going at a very high speed at the moment. And the market is, as you, as you saw in the uh, stock market numbers, quite nervous about that. There are going to be a lot of interest rate hikes, but the question is, are there going to be so many that contrary to what the chairman just said, it does affect the job market, it does affect growth, it does affect the overall economy. There are not a lot of examples of us trying to decelerate an economy with this much inflation this quickly without it having an effect on economic growth and even possibly ending in a recession. Steve, we're one year into the Biden presidency, and by all accounts, I mean, if you look at the economy, at many, many indications, at many levels of the economy, we're doing very well. And yet, you go into a store or you go to the gas station, and the prices, the, sh the rise in prices shock you. So what is going on? What's happened? What can you tell us about Well, that's it? a great lead into my charts, Mike. Thanks so much. Perfect. So let's take a look at Biden's first year and how he's done on those three points, as well as a few other things and even a couple of non-economic things. So to your point, if you take a look at the chart, you can see that when we started the year, economists thought growth would be about 4.5%, which is very robust, but we were coming out of the pandemic. It ended at 5.6%, so well ahead of expectations. Unemployment, we thought, would be over 5% at, uh, at the end of the year. It ended at 3.9%. So great overperformance on growth and on unemployment. But as you suggested, and as we all well know, inflation hit the highest level in 30 years, up 6.7%. That's the turquoise bar, obviously, compared to expectations of 2.2. So we got the inflation completely wrong. So t two questions for you. One. How does a quarter point raise in the, in the interest rates, as they indicated they might do, how does that tamp down inflation? And B, the big question, you might not be able to answer. Even you might not be able to answer this. Why is it that so many people don't want to go to work? Well, those are two separate questions. Look, on the first question, nobody thinks quarter point is going to make much of a difference. It's simply, as you saw again in Tom Costello's report, part of a process in which they go up, which they're expected to go up at least four times next year. So that would be a full percentage point. And then they go from there. And it's not unusual to go up half a point if you have to. There, there's a lot of division among economists about where interest rates are going, but some predict they're going to go up, they have to go up an awful lot uh, to slow this economy down. And to your second question about why people don't want to go back to work, I think there are really three reasons, complicated questions, no one answer. But people were given a lot of money uh, during the pandemic, a lot of stimulus checks, yeah. a lot of unemployment insurance. 
They still have health care concerns, and a lot of them simply don't want to go back to the old jobs they had. But if you take a look at this chart, you can see that, notwithstanding all that, we've had huge job creation. We had 6.4 million jobs created last year. Uh, compared to an estimate of 4.7. And if you look back, this chart goes all the way back to 1951. It's 50% more jobs than have ever been created in a single year. But to your point, there are still 10.6 million open jobs in this country, a record wow. number of jobs. Wow. And 2.3 million people have left the labor force, also to your point, not actively looking. But let's take a look just before we finish on a couple of non-economic uh, non things that happened last year to President Biden. So first, we all know Build Back Better isn't passing, but you can see in this chart a way to sort of look at the overall picture, which is the fact that Congress has been doing less and less every year. If you go back to the 1980s, it was passing 230 bills a year. A lot of them are small. They're naming post offices and things, but it's a metric, 230 bills. And it's been gradually going down, and now it's down to 81 in the first year of this Congress, one of the lowest, second lowest ever really in history. But on the right, and this is very uh, timely given the news about Justice Breyer, where President Biden has done exceptionally well and not gotten that much attention for it, is judicial appointments. He's had 42 uh, justices confirmed to the district, district court and the courts of appeals, higher than Reagan. You have to go back to Kennedy to find a record of that many confirmations. And now, of course, he's going to get his first court uh, pick, which puts him in the company of Trump, Obama, Clinton, and Reagan for having had a first-year mm. court pick. Mm. Mika. There you go. All right, Steve, stay with us. Coming up, the push to make sure Joe Biden keeps his campaign promise to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court and forced to choose between a popular podcaster who spreads misinformation and the music of Neil Young. Spotify chooses the podcaster. We'll discuss the many dynamics at play at the in the controversy over Joe Rogan. I think I know what I'm doing with my Spotify account. Morning Joe is coming right back. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.